If you're a facilities manager at a warehouse and your HVAC system goes down, it can turn up the heat, literally. But don't sweat it, Granger has you covered. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products for all your operations, including warehouse HVAC maintenance. And even better, they offer access to experts and fast delivery, so you and your warehouse can both keep your cool. Call 1 800 Granger, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. This episode of the Archaeological Fantasies podcast was recorded at Gen Con 50 with the podcast Gaming with Scott. Check out Gaming with Scott at gamingwithscott.libson.com. Good, evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm broadcasting live from Capitol in Maryland from the floor of Gen Con 50. Woo. Gen Con 50! Gen Con 50! Woo. We love Gen Con. Uh, I am here with Rico. Yo. And we have a very special guest, Sarah Head. That's from, my real name. Right? Not really. My last name's really Head. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, I knew that. Um, but I was going to go, was there a pseudonym I was supposed to use? Did I just out you to the entire archaeological world? No, I've been told that I can't hide behind my pseudonyms anymore. So, <gasps> Who told you that? People. Really? It's okay. They're okay. right. They're right. Nobody knows who the hell I am. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, Sarah Head from Archaeological Fantasies. Yes. Also known as Archie Fantasies, if that's what you were looking for. Yes. Archie? Archie Fantasies. Or Archie. Like Archie it's, and Jughead. You know, it, it it's, it's Archie, but I didn't realize that I was spelling Archie, but it's been over 10 years now. So, so, so there is what it is. Yeah, yeah so it, it's Archie. It's Archie Fantasies, but a lot of people call me Archie, which is also why a lot of people think I'm male. Have they heard you? No, I don't know. You would think so. Yeah, I mean, I still get emails, and that's cool. I mean, people need to email me, but I still get mails dressed, addressed to Sir every once in a while. Archie? Archie. Sir Archie? Sir Archie. Nice. So tell us a little bit about Archie Fantasies. So Archie fantasies. Um, so Archie has this thing about Veronica and Jughead, like yes. to get. Okay, so that's I need to let. The, so Ar- Archie. 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 Archaeological. Archie, fa- I've always done archaeological fantasies. That's been well, my that's, thing. That's the official name of both the blog and the um, podcast, but it's a pain in the ass to type out every time. So can this I is swear? True. Uh, um, anything but an f bomb. Okay, cool. Yeah, there, there are so some yeah, that we can get away with. A pain in the posterior. Okay. You don't have I will, to go that far. I will tone it down. I apologize. Oh, you um, have, what? You haven't said anything yet that isn't. We've got a guy that starts screaming the F word on the thing, and we're like, really? That's five times. We keep telling you. Anyhow, that, was that, that episode just went out. <laughs> oh, that's things to look forward to. Yes. Um, but oh, anyway, sorry, I, don't wanna, I don't want to type the whole thing out, so I shortened it to Archie, or Archie Fantasies. Now you got me doing it. I didn't do it. Archie Fantasies. Archie Fantasies. Can be with it. So uh, you're the only archaeological podcast on the entire interwebs. Uh, we are not the only archaeological uh, podcast. Because that's what I heard. We are part of a network called the uh, Archaeological Podcast Network. The we APN. Are, yeah, the APN. We They're are one of that. 12 shows currently. Well, and um, that's what I was, that was the funny part is, okay, and I'm going to step on you. I apologize. Go no, ahead. Sorry. One of 12 yeah. shows. Tell me more. No, no, we're, we're one of 12 shows, but most of the shows on the APN are aimed at um, archaeologists and archaeology themes. Um, so we're looking at like education kind of themes and just talking about the field in general. So if, if you're interested in how archaeologists talk to each other or they talk about the field when, you know, they've had a couple or whatever, um, most of the other shows are good. Archaeological Fantasies is special because we talk about the pseudo-archaeology and the pseudoscience and the weird stuff that people think they find and, and the stuff that gets out there on television like Unearthed America and like most of the History Network and that kind of stuff. <laughs> most so, of the History Network. Yeah. Screw the History Network. Um, but yeah, you heard that here. You we'll did. say it. You've heard it on the podcast here. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so we talk about... Uh, you know, weird stuff. We talk about Indiana Jones, the movies. We've talked about Crystal Skulls. We've talked about... Um, I liked that movie. The science was sound. It was totally legit. Completely And again, legit. Um, Sarah was the one that brought to my attention, Rico, uh, that, no, he's all about that it was a lead line and that was okay. And then they talked about what happens about the sheer impact, the concussive force of being knocked across like that. Sarah brought a phenomenal... Uh, clapback of he did drink from the cup in the he third did. one didn't he, did. he? I mean, so he's gonna be immortal it Thank is you. the same character yeah it is. so I mean Ta-da. we can totally fall back on that he does have his own legend about him his own history phenomenal 
So when I when I hear and I apologize to the other archaeological um, podcasts. Oh, they're uh, great podcasts. They really they, are. They are, and I listened to a smattering of them before I started listening to yours. Yeah. A little here, a little here, a little here, and what I read into was it was. I have now run into it was like, well, I, I have a friend, and you know, she's on this archaeological, and they're like archaeological fantasies, and I went, what? And then it was, I've had so many people that have said that that it's like, okay, yeah. that is the number one podcast of archaeology on the entire. Internet. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. It led me to believe how wonderful it was. So you guys go in and out. Um, and you correct all of the we, less than accurate reporting, for example, say the History Channel? We do not target anyone specifically. Good. Uh, much to my chagrin. Because, um, <laughs> man, I've got a list. But we, what we try to do is present the real face of archaeology in a way that is approachable to the public so that someone who isn't trained in archaeology who just has an interest in it can listen to our podcast and hopefully understand what myself and my two co-hosts, um, Ken Fader and Jeff Card are talking about. Um, and then walk away from the episode a little bit more informed about whatever the topic was for the day, but also armed with the ability to see bull crap when they hear it or see it on the television. So we don't like take a history channel show and break it down specifically but there's like there's greater themes out in the fringe and out in uh, the pseudo archaeology f- uh, world mm-hmm. and we try to address those larger points and we try to use examples from the real world like the Newark Coley Stones or the Bat mm. Creek Stone or I'm just trying to think of some of the more recent things we've talked about. Like we've got an episode coming out on um, hidden cities, hidden Maya cities and that kind of stuff and P.T. Barnum. And so... <laughs> nice. The circus people? Yeah, P.T. Barnum. Yeah, we've got a really great episode coming out. We've got some excellent uh, experts be brought in on it and I don't want to spoil it but it, it should drop Monday which I don't know when your podcast is going to go out so that could be a month from now but whatever. Nice. It will not be... Uh, well... Let me think. Today, it well, I can ki- I can make it Tuesday. I mean, it's I mean, it's your podcast, man. Right. You drop it when you want. Well, then it'll go later tonight. Spoil drop it. it. Spoil it. It's hot. Oh, I can't. I know. I don't want you to spoil it. No, no. no I'm, I'm seriously for the podcasters' creed. You can't do that. That's hashtag no spoilers. I mean, that's we're all about that. It's all kinds of good. Um, so when you uh, do, you have a top five hit list. I mean, you can't do. You won't do it on your show. I get that, but you're not on your show. <laughs> you're on my show. I don't care. Uh, no, I can't. I can't <laughs> do that. She's like, I can't do that. I mean, yeah, I have one, but no, I can't do it. Oh, okay, uh, good. We'll talk off mic. It'll, uh, <laughs> um, I might. Uh, I might post spoilers. I'll, like number one will be lined out, and number two will be listed. Three and four will be blank. Five will be listed. I mean, I mean. Obviously, like, there's you know who people, you are. Yeah, I mean, they do. They know who they are. And uh, that's the thing. Like, we're, it's going to happen eventually. So we're going to get some litigation as this show gets larger and what? our message gets out there. It's going to happen. But, like, I'm going to try to, like, not start that. You think that. you're going to get hit with cease and desist, huh? Oh, man, I've already been threatened with it on my <gasps> po- uh, the blog. Really? I, I got, uh, yeah. I, um, okay, are you, you have a gag order? Can you talk about this? It's not a gag order. No, he was just, okay. it's, it's not, it's nothing official. It was just, uh, this one guy got really miffed about, um, me talking about his presence on the American Unearthed show. Um, and I was just repeating what he had said on the show and apparently he didn't like that. And he, but he said it. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, I don't think people understand that. Um, <laughs> that the words coming out of their mouth are attributable to them especially after they've been recorded saying them like yeah, there's film of you saying never... and i understand that there's some editing that goes into these shows which is one of my pet peeves like a lot of these shows are edited in a way to make people look like they're agreeing to anything but like mm. specific words came out of his mouth that i addressed on the blog and uh, he did not like them and he was he threatened to sue me for um professional slander Whoa. And I was like, but you're not an archaeologist, so... Where's the professional? Right. Zing. So that's not an issue. Also, you said these things. And he was like, yeah, well, I'm going to sue you until you're so poor you have to live out of your car. And I was like, well, obviously there. you don't know what archaeologists Did do I'm, because I've lived yeah, out of my car for five years now. So <laughs> archaeologists do, But archaeologists do that, like in the real world. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so go ahead. No, that, I that's mean, a thing. So let me ask: Is it Al? Okay, so can I be ignorant for a second? Sure, I would love it. So is it Alan Grant, where we all go out in Montana and we've got the thing where we put the shotgun shell, and then it's like 1970s technology, and it shows the little picture of the raptor? Do you guys do all of that? 
No, we don't hunt dinosaurs. You don't hunt dinosaurs? We don't do dinosaurs. Oh, do you not dear. listen to the theme song? Yeah, we are I do. Clear, I <laughs> clear in the theme song that we do not do dinosaurs. I have uh, wanted to poke at that. That That's where I started with Alan Grant. And then I was beautiful, like, okay. Beautiful song written by Archeo Soup. It's wonderful. It is a beautiful song. Yes. Go ahead, Rico. What are we going to well, I was going to say, Scott, I'm over here fooling around. Scott I apologize. Scott may know what the theme song is, but our listeners do not. So he's he's trying to get information oh, for the them, Oh, the song too. is literally called We Don't we Do don't Dinosaurs. We Don't Do Dinosaurs. Yeah. Right. And it's, yeah. it's uh, <laughs> RQC Productions. Um, yeah, he was a YouTuber the same time I was. I think he still is doing YouTube so, videos. So, yeah, Scott may be being may be being naive, but it, it's for the sake of our other <laughs> listeners that, that don't listen to the show. Or because know. Is is we don't do dinosaurs. Scott like, and I will play off of each other as if we've known yeah. each other for years. I don't know. I don't know how that happens. I don't, I don't know. It's I just amazing. You. I couldn't tell you. I don't know, what's, I don't know what's going on here. Um, so that's why it was my opening line was going to be like, so Sarah, tell me about your show. How many dinosaur know. digs have you been on? When so the th- opening I may, theme is... I may be is, talking in a certain not tone to Scott, but to the greater audience, archaeologists <laughs> do not dig dinosaurs. Uh, that you're looking for a paleontologist there. Yes. So um, then. So Rico, do you want to learn what archaeologists do? No, no. I, <laughs> He's like, I was no. Gonna, I was going to talk right. to nice. her about her podcast. But, oh, do it, do it. Okay. Um, so does your podcast cover um, debunking fake archaeologists? Yes. And fake archaeology? Yes. Okay. So um, you said you had like a top five list. Um, you don't have to tell us what that list is. That's good. But um, yes, I'm going to ask, um, are some of these fake shows on cable or network television? I mean, yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you that like the, a lot of the stuff that's coming out on History Channel and I think the Travel Channel for a while had a couple of the shows. I mean, I have issues with how entertainment media chooses to represent archaeology as a, in general, especially one of their shows... Um, like those that they're like, hey, it's a show on archaeology, and it's like, yeah, where's your archaeologist? Oh, well, we don't have one, but we've got this guy who's an enthusiast, and it's like, yeah, it's not the same thing. He doesn't actually know what he's talking about, and you can make up a title if you want, but forensic geologists don't do what he says he's doing either. So, how nice. much bad science have mm-hmm. you had to debunk over the years of your podcast? Well, the podcast is two and a half years old, going on three. We just started our third season at the beginning of this year. Um, yeah, so whatever. Um, that sounds weird. So about three years of bad <laughs> that science sounds, that you've had that to correct. Weird. Well, yeah, but the podcast has existed for about, uh, not the podcast, the blog has existed for about eight years now. So there, there was a blog before there was a podcast. And then a friend of mine, Chris Webster, decided that he wanted to try to build the, the APN, the Archaeological, Archaeological Podcasting Network. And... Um, I was one. Of, I wasn't the first show. Our show wasn't the first show that was proposed. But um, pretty much after he got the CRM Archaeology podcast going, and he got a listenership for that, he he and I proposed to Ken Fader if maybe he would want to come on a show because Ken's actually pretty well known in the archaeological community for his his work debunking bad archaeology and bad science and advocating for archaeologists professional archaeologists to come forward and address these kind of things because part of the problem is is that professional archaeologists at least in the past the problem has been that um they don't want to deal with it they think it's silly um they don't want to be associated with something goofy like that because it it can be a career ending if you come out in support of something that's blatantly stupid um it's okay to say stupid yeah and i'm trying to be diplomatic because i'm I'm representing my podcast um so we, we love you so we asked him to be on the show, and he, he jumped on it, and I'm so glad he did. And then about a year ago, year and a half ago, we brought Ke- or we brought Jeb on, and it's been the three of us ever since. So, yeah, we're, we've got a really good and, – and Ken – or sorry, Jeb also is a bit at, big advocate for professionals coming forward and, and speaking out against this kind of stuff and going to conferences. Jeb gets out a lot and goes to conferences where the fringe is present – and he doesn't confront them face to face because there's no point in confronting people face to face over these kind of things. But it's good to know what they're thinking and what they're saying and what they're doing so that you, you know what you need to correct and what you need to talk to people about. Because a lot of it's not, not done out of malice. It's done out of ignorance. Well, and to make a buck. 
there is a lot of that out there, and um, so you're saying there's an this goes back to the whole I there. can't tell you what my list is. There's what you're saying there's an altiology out there. Ooh, that's a good one. Altiology. <laughs> I'm gonna bring that one up. Feel free to use it. I'm going to yeah. my gift. Altiology yeah. from there from go. gaming with Scott. It's all good, baby. <laughs> I got um, a gift. I got wonderful. a word. Yay. And words are one. Oh, they're the best Words gifts. have power. I've they been do. sitting they on do. that altiology word for about 10 minutes. That's why I wanted to say something. That's nice. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Well, because, uh, okay, much like management, and I, in my in my day job, I'm a manager, and manager is boring, repetitive work. You have a job? I have a job, right? I know. It's like, I have a job? Really? really? Seriously? A real job? What's like, this? That pays the bills? What? Um, archaeology it is... Or can be a boring, laborious, repetitive. I mean, I don't want to categorize. You tell me. Is it as shiny as the TV shows would make it? I mean, well, it depends. What do you? What do you? Which TV shows are you talking about? Like, am I punching Nazis? No. Am I digging? Indiana. Right. Am I digging (laughs) large holes that go for meters into the ground? Yeah, I'm doing that. But. It depends. Like, if you are not the kind of person that is detail driven and who likes to have a very abstract problem that you have to put together and may not necessarily ever get the right answer from, you're probably not made for archaeology because mm. we, no archaeologist that I know will ever say 100%, well, on record, will never say that we know something 100%. Um, because there's no way to know something. There's a difference between inductive and, and, and deductive reasoning, and, mm. and we have to use we have to use them together because, like, I'm gonna get way too deep into this, but like, you know, no, it's perfectly no, okay, good. right? Like, we're we're the person that comes in after the sandwich has been made. Like, there's a sandwich. Okay, where'd the sandwich come from? Well, we can take the sandwich apart and maybe figure out who made the sandwich and how they made the sandwich and why did they put the mustard on the top layer and not on the bottom layer? And because you know, everybody knows mayonnaise is better on the bottom. Well, I mean, but yeah, it's so, a there's water your culture, so there's your culture that puts the mayonnaise on the bottom, but maybe, like, my culture puts mayonnaise on the top. So now I need to figure out why your culture thinks mayonnaise on the bottom is better and blah, 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 blah. And so that's what archaeologists do. And the sandwich is basically the unit. You know, you, you, you cut the sod off the top, and then you start taking the layers down, and you're going through, like, the mayonnaise and the cheese and the this and, and the that. And that's Well, the tomatoes were always next to the mayo. Maybe it was a water barrier I don't thing. know. I, mean, I like ah. to put my tomatoes on the bottom because they get the bread soggy, and I like <gasps> the bottom piece that's of bread. That's why the mayo is there. Your yeah. culture and my culture, we could not mix. Well, so you can use mustard for the same kind of watertight barrier. No, you can't. You can. Because mustard's an emulsifier. It'll take water or fat. But it'll cre- It'll fill in the crevices, and so you've got a little bit of time. Only a little bit of time. How uh, long with are you, mayo. Like, are you staring at the sandwich? Are you making a sandwich? <sighs> what if I'm making a group of sandwiches? Yeah, sometimes you have to make lots and lots of sandwiches, and you if can't it, eat yours right away. Well, if it's see, a hoagie, this is where by the time I put the tomatoes on this end, the tomatoes on that end are full soggy. I'm see, done. And that, and that way we're looking at the position because we see that the tomatoes on the left side got put down before the tomatoes on the right side. And right. What happened to the tomatoes as they went across? But that wouldn't happen if you used mayo. I'm just saying. I know. No, so I get exactly culture, what you're saying. Not no, I get exactly wants to put what you're mayo saying. On the bottom. And it, it and it is fascinating. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, and it is it drives people to, and, and it, it's amazing. It does. I, and I, like, there's and the, the the biggest problem with archaeology isn't that that people think it's boring because a lot of people don't even know what archaeology is. Like, they don't know enough about it. That's why I started with the dinosaur know, question. Yeah, they don't know enough <laughs> about it to know that it can be tedious. Um, but at the same time, like, I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Scott. I'm sorry. I blame you. I'm sorry. Because you said that most people don't know that it's that deconstruction to find those It is. It's, it's very deconstructive because a lot of times when, we're, when we come out of the field with our artifacts, we've got, you know, maybe five or six nails, some pieces of glass. We might get lucky. and I mean, if it's a prehistoric site, we might find a couple full points and some mm. pottery. And from there, we're reconstructing from those artifacts plus all of the maps that we took and all of the pictures that we took and the soil stain features and the this and the that. And we're... we're it's a grand picture. It's not a one thing. Like there's right. nothing. There's no one object that's ever going to come out of an archaeology site that's going to be like this answers everything. Hey, podcast fans! Check out the Arc 365 podcast at www.arcpodnet.com forward slash arc 365. That's A R C H 365 for your daily dose of archaeology. Each episode is less than 15 minutes long, and we have some great guests recording about awesome archaeology. We also try to throw in some definitions and basic archaeological information. So, check out the 365 Days of Archaeology podcast only in 2017 at www.arcpodnet.com forward slash arc 365 today. 
Find us also on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Google Music by typing ARC365 into the search. Now back to the show. Yo, I was wicked excited when they unearthed the heads of uh, Easter Island and found that there were full-on bodies underneath those heads. I was jacked because I was like, I thought those were always just big heads. And see, and that's another thing. Like, we just did an episode on that, too. I had a lovely uh, Fernanda Menez. Menez? Please, I'm sorry I butchered your name. Um, But she came on and she talked to us about the the Moai statues and the Mm -hmm. Moai culture. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that was one of the things that was brought up. Like, not only do they have full bodies, but they also have carvings on them. Yeah. In the form of tattoos. And there's a written language that's been associated with them. And so there's a lot of things that people don't know about that. But... If I brought a giant head statue out to you, I mean, what's the first thing? I mean, one of those oh, yeah. giant block head statues, what's the first thing you're going to think? That's the head of Easter Island, yeah. Right, yo. exactly. And I mean, and this blends in perfectly with like my current thing. I want to be looking at pop culture and how it corresponds with archaeology and how it's represented, how archaeology is represented there. Uh, the Moai statues are a perfect example because mm-hmm. they're almost always represented as like aliens or, and they're, it's in Marvel comics and it's in oh, Johnny it's Quest. Oh, it's Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it goes back as far as the statues have existed all the way up to today where it's like Night at the Museum and all that yes. kind of stuff. So. Exactly. So, so let's, that's a beautiful segue and a beautiful transition. I do this. Um, I know, right? <laughs> it's almost like you do this like, for, for, yeah. I know how to do that's this. Like, that's like, the that's thing. crazy talk. Um, so... Talk to us more about the intersection of those two. So I'm not like the first person to examine this. There's a lot of archaeologists out there who are looking at modern modern representations of archaeology in media and in pop culture because there's so much of it now and then it's it's really easy to look at. And I was part I was briefly part of a project. I don't know if anybody remembers when the game No Man's Sky landed. Yep. I think what is mm-hmm. it, two years ago or a year and a half ago? A year now? and a half about yeah, that. Something like yeah. that. There was a friend of mine, Andrew Reinhardt, and his associates who decided to get together and do an archaeological survey of the game. So we were actually inside the game as archaeologists, examining the game as an artifact and as players. Interesting. Well, so you guys played the game to do an archaeological dig in the did. game? Yeah. And that it, is awesome. And Andrew's got some white papers and stuff written up. If you look for the No Man's Sky Archaeological Survey, you should be able to find all of that, um, that that Andrew did. He put a white paper out, and I think he's due to put another one out soon. But he's he's been keeping up on it. I haven't been, but he's been keeping up on this project. And it's it's not just video games. It's, it's also, like, from my passion right now is the way that there's being represented in movie media, specifically the Marvel movies that are coming out. Mm-hmm. We, we've talked about this briefly yeah. about... You know, there's it's what there's 15 or 16 Marvel movies now, and there, there's an overarching plot that goes through the majority of the movies, and it's actually an archaeological thread that they're using to go through all the movies with, with these stones and like the 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 ancient ones who put the stones together, and then you've got the weirdo collector who knows all these stuff, and I know there's other things coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, because I know they've got a couple more stones that they still need to release. They've only, what, put out two of them in the movies now? No, uh, they've got, no there uh, was one in Thor. There five was, of the six. Yeah, the, I think the, so yeah, on the I last think stone. one yep. more, yeah. yeah. Which we'll probably see in Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to, yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh. Um, so did we do that? Not a, it's not a spoiler. It's, it's not really It's spoiler, like you, you go read about Thor Ragnarok. Has anybody <laughs> even seen the preview outside of like the San Diego Comic-Con yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It leaked. It did. It's all over the place. Yeah, it's out there. Good, I need to go get on the internet again. Yeah, that's um, okay. But yeah, I, I want to see how, because a lot of people, more people interact with media than they interact with academia. And the media has a fascination with anything weird or strange. And unfortunately, archaeology just gets pigeonholed in that. Because again, not oh, yeah. enough people understand what real archaeology is to understand that it's not that weird. Um, but when you're dealing with the past and when you're dealing with... Um, I think Jeff calls it historical memory. Like your memory, the the culture, the memory of a culture only goes back so far, and past that point, everything is just you know mists and and memories and, and, and dark, spooky tales. And that's why things can be that way because you don't have anybody living who remembers any of that time. And if you go far enough back, you don't have much of a written record or what right. written re- re- written record you have isn't recognizable so it's easy for archaeology to be the mystery field right. um, well but i think it's i think it's pivotal 
and it needs to continue. Obviously, you you're, you're a big proponent of that. But the, so I have the example then. There's uh, we as Americans are terrible at this. I the, the the fact that Mozart and Ben Franklin lived at the same time. Right. We don't like, understand timelines. Either. Exactly. Yeah. Exa- the timeline, and that's directly out of you're like okay, well first this half, like you said, well f- they put the tomatoes on left to right because these tomatoes were put on first. Right. We have a timeline. We deconstruct to get that timeline. Like my son, Benjamin Franklin created a, a musical instrument that Mozart wrote a piece for, mm-hmm. and he was like. How did Mozart write a piece? He lived like thousands of right, years before right, Ben Franklin. Right. I'm like, they were alive at the same time. Do you not? Uh, and we as Americans, and that I felt that I had hor- done a horrible thing that my child did not know. Like these two historic people, they lived at the same time. You know that, right? Like Ben Franklin went to Europe, and they, you know, they met, right? And yeah. it was like, oh, you would have thought I was just like uh, manna from heaven. He, he had no mind. idea. Yeah, I blew his mind, and he was like. <laughs> What Ben Franklin, the inventor, and Mozart, the music at the same. T- they were in the same room, and I was like, seriously, yeah. I felt really bad. But this is the kind of deconstruction, and, and it's the kind of thing like that would be more of a historical thing. But we have a lot of that ourselves in archaeology. But people don't understand when certain cultures were around. Like they don't right. understand what cultures were contemporary to others, and so they don't understand that the Egyptians weren't the first culture, or that the Chinese weren't the first culture. That they were existing at the same time, and that sometimes when you bring up trade amongst different cultures. People are like, no, they wouldn't have traded. They didn't know each other. One of them was dead when the other was born. It was like, no, they no, were. No, they, they existed. Were. I mean, you know, these two people met. Yeah, like these two cultures I mean, were you, at the same. And that's place. the other problem. Like people don't under people. And I, I, I'm saying this as if you know all people. Um, well, no, but the average but, person doesn't understand that. Um, there's a lot of America that can't point out the United States on a map. But carry on. <laughs> but culture's continuous as well. Yes. Like culture, it, it cultures end yes but they end for certain reasons and it's though not undone it's very uncommon for a culture to simply cease and a lot of people think that cultures like with the maya is a perfect example i mean people modern people do not understand that the maya culture is a living culture and there are living people who are mayas and they one of my members of my credit union is maya yeah exactly he's cool he's super cool and I mean, we were talking about this with the Mayan hieroglyphs episode. Um, that it's it's still a living language. They mm-hmm. they still they publish newspapers in the language. It's it's a it's a hieroglyphic language. They still speak it. And but if you walk up to the average person and you're like, yeah, the Mayan culture, they're the first things they're going to think about are those cool step pyramids out in the middle of the jungle with vines and and mysterious things inside. And and, and then they think all of those pieces are uh, dead. Yeah. yeah. So that that's a that's which is not even close. But go ahead. Uh, Right, right, right. Oh, wow. Taking we it back there. to Indiana Jones. We, we made there. that reference once already. Yeah, I'm not even that big of a fan. Of what? Of number two? Of Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones? Really? I mean, I is love that, the man. I really do. Is that do, because he's a, he's a fake archaeologist? You know, that's the really funny part about it. Like, they really tried hard to make Indiana Jones be a real archaeologist, and I, I disagree with Jeff on this. Like, I, I understand that they put scenes in the last couple few movies where they're like, oh, yeah, he's, per- he's Dr. Jones when he's got his glasses on, and then he's Superman when he takes them off. Um... But I'm like, yeah, he's still he's still a Tomb Raider. He's, he's still, <laughs> still, a tomb, tomb still a Tomb Raider. Still yeah. a Tomb Raider. But I mean, I, they're <laughs> enjoyable movies, and I, I love the hell out of watching them. But like, when people bring it up, it's just like, it's not an archaeologist. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Laura Croft is right out, right? <laughs> so okay, so the funny thing about Laura Croft, we've talked about this on the Women in Archaeology show, um, which is another one of my podcasts that I promote. Um, yay. yay. Uh, the original Laura Croft was actually. I mean, there's a reason the, the game is called Tomb Raider. Uh, but I guess with the new incarnation. Oh, is that like a, is that? It was kind of a giveaway. Is that giveaway. like ironic? Yeah, it was kind of a oh, giveaway. Oh, it's a callback. Oh, okay. Oh. But I so I guess together. the newest incarnations of her, she's actually a, an, an archaeologist. Like I guess the first game where she comes out, or the, the more recent first game where they relaunched her, mm-hmm. um, she was on her, her undergraduate dig or something. Yep. And that's nice. where she gets captured. I haven't actually played the games. So I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, well, I always thought she was there to stop the Tomb Raiders. And that she had to climb her way and then shoot the bad guys who were going to raid well, the tombs. I mean, no. And then take everything as she goes through it. That could have been a giveaway. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. they the they, what they did with Lara, Laura Croft with the rebooting is I think probably. Well, I'm not an archaeologist, so they tried to don't take. Her. Yeah, they they tried to. Yeah. Yeah. They tried nice. to make her a legitimate archaeologist. Yeah, and I mean I appreciate that. I appreciate that thought in the game world and the, and how. And again, this is another one of those things about how archaeology is represented in the media and how mm-hmm. they're evolving. You know, I mean, so obviously somebody was there and was like, okay, look, real archaeologists, ABC. 
And they're like, okay, well, we'll take A. And they ran with that. But at least they tried. So, and everybody who's played the game tells me it's a, a phenomenal game and they really enjoyed it. So, there you go. I just, you know, because I feel like if you, I feel you could make a game out of archaeology that could be interesting and people would want to play, but you wouldn't have to make it like super boring or anything like that, like mind sweep or something. So, um, in <laughs> mind sweep archaeology, the <laughs> um, world of archaeology, um, is there ever that aha moment or that rush of adrenaline um, being? doctors and scientists when you find something or you stumble upon something oh, yeah. or you hit a breakthrough and, and A plus B connects equals C. So um, I assume you're an archaeologist since you... <laughs> can, oh, I don't know her, so I'm oh, sorry. This is, this I just, I just play one this on the radio. Right? Yeah, I, I don't know you, so this is, this is a very... Someone on the History Channel is going, that's Sarah Head. She's not even credible at all. That's, I, that, I, that, that lady I here is not I am a real right archaeologist. I is. have uh, 14 years of experience in the field and the lab. I focus mainly, mainly on um, CRM archaeology, though I have worked academically. Um, what is CRM? Oh, so, yeah. I should stop talking like everyone knows what I'm talking about. Uh, CRM is short for Cultural Resource Management. Oh, okay. Uh, it's basically contract archaeology. There was a law that was passed back in the 70s called Section 106, and it basically states, well, here in the States anyway, uh, it says that nothing can be built until an area has been surveyed to make sure that there's nothing of historical significance. Oh, in okay. The area. Right, right. So CRM are the companies that come in and usually do the surveys, and if something is found, they're the ones that go in and, and they either recover it or they recommend... Uh, a rerouting. Like when the, um, was it 65 that got built or 69 that got built all the way down? Six, 69. Through Kokomo? Yeah, 69, the, the the new interstate that is having all the problems. That whole area had to be surveyed before the road was even built. By archaeologists? Yes. To so make that, sure there was nothing of cultural yeah, relevance. Yeah, and that's why some of the areas got rerouted. Um, some of them were for biological reasons because the, the bio people go out and they're like, no, this is a habitat, you can't go through it. And some of it's us going out there and saying, you know, there's there's a huge site here, you probably shouldn't put that road through it. Um, and a lot of times companies, if it's too big of a site, the companies will just reroute. But sometimes they hire us to go back in and do what we call a phase three, and we go in. And that's phase three is what people think of when they think of archaeology. We go in and we put down a grid, we put mm -hmm. in units, mm -hmm. and we start taking and the start dirt out. And start digging stuff yeah. up, yeah. Um, so that's that's what that is. And, and then it's like panning for gold. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm also a master's candidate at the Adam State University starting this month, actually. So. Woohoo! So, what have you done that got you most excited in your 14 years of um, your archaeological career? I like dirt. Like, I know that sounds stupid, but <laughs> no, it doesn't. I know you. No, and I know. <laughs> and she's like, I like dirt, and I'm like, I no, like, she's not I kidding. Like dirt. I yeah, don't I know. know her, so I'm trying to find out. That's All right. Cool. So, like, um, people think artifacts are really cool, but artifacts are anything that's been manipulated by man. So mm -hmm. it, it can be the, the, the points that are being brought out of the ground or the nails or stuff like that. But there's also things that are left behind that are called features. And features can be things like um, soil stains or post holes or wall remnants, that kind of stuff. It can even be as much as the landscape. Like when we're talking about Mound City out in Ohio or um, Poverty Point or any of the larger earthworks that that, that people are thinking about. That's landscape, and that's been altered, so it is hypothetically an, arch uh, an artifact. And so um, that's the kind of stuff that I really get excited about. Now, I like the stuff that's in the dirt, not necessarily on top of on the On top dirt. of it, right. So I like when we're taking the, the dirt down and we start finding the soil stains because that's, that's more of a mystery to me than the artifacts themselves. I mean, the artifacts help. If the artifacts aren't there in situ or in context with the stains, I mean, I, I have a dirt stain. Woo. What's C2? Um, in situ means in the earth. Oh, okay. So it's when you go and you find it and it's still covered in dirt and it's still poking up out of the ground. Um, so that helps us identify what the stains are for. And when I mean stains, I mean like you'll have your lighter colored dirt, which yeah. is the undisturbed dirt. And then you'll have, it it's literally looks like a dark stain, like someone poured oil or black paint on top of something. Um, and that's the stain you're chasing, and that's that's your feature. And you take that out, and you take there's usually artifacts in that dirt, and you take all that out, and you analyze what it is, and you can figure things out like where the house was, where the floor was, what were they doing in that room, just based on the things that are there. And just in the dirt. Just in the just dirt. Just variations in the dirt. Yeah, I mean, we can reconstruct that's entire civilizations. Well, we have reconstructed entire civilizations just based on the stuff that's in the dirt and the color of the dirt and where the, the dirt colors are. That's wild. That's awesome. I didn't even know that was possible. That's what archaeology does. And yeah. now we've started bringing in things like chemical analysis and pollen analysis, and we've brought in all kinds of interesting things. Um, so we've got all kinds of microscopic stuff that we're doing now that's giving us even more interesting stuff like uh, use wear analysis on um, stone tools is telling us 
what they were using the stone tools to cut or to butcher, which gives us an idea of what they were eating or if they were processing plants or that oh, kind of stuff. Oh, full dietary information. Yeah, and uh, there's on even a, a couple people out there who are working on um, basically DNA. Um, so they're doing like the archaeology of DNA of ancient peoples. And this is not to be confused with the Ancestry.com stuff where you take a cheek swab and they tell you, like, you're from wherever because those things are not accurate and you're wasting your money. Um, <laughs> that's all That's all science, guys. It's fake science. I mean, your DNA is real, but there's no way that your DNA is going to pinpoint you down to, like, the Balkans. It's just no. not going to happen. No. Yeah, it's just not how that works. Yeah. But. We can use DNA analysis in conjunction with archaeology, which gives us a lot more information about a culture and a people and, and you know, intermarriage between two different groups and that kind of stuff. So That's super cool. Is okay. that not cool? That is super cool. So um, I know that there is uh, a lot of document. It is cool. You are it right. Cool. It is cool. It is awesome. Dude, I, have, I could go on with this interview for hours. We could just say skip the last interview and this one will just run over. <laughs> Because there's a lot that I could that I that I like want to learn I feel like and ask about. Mean too. I was like, uh, screw that guy. Forget, forget well, about that guy. We know, know, we know who's next. I don't want to talk about science. <laughs> Sorry, you got bumped. We're talking about science. Science so, is a uh, thing. We do that here. I've seen a lot of documentaries Contrary to on, rest of Indiana. on like oh. Stonehenge <laughs> and other henges and stuff like that throughout henge. the world. He's gonna henge now. No, That's I'm not. Cool. I'm gonna That's ask. Fine. Oh, okay, go for it. Is that typical um, a, a typical site that an archaeologist would go into to try and discern what it was used for? Um, by would they would they try to figure out why it was there and who put it there? Or is that um, well Stonehenge? Yeah, I mean Stonehenge is a great site because it it grows every time we come up with new technology to examine it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, originally we thought it was just yes. Go ahead. No, oh, no. Originally I'll we wait. thought you in the back. You in the yes, back. The did back. you have a question? Yeah, I um, did. I'll, I'll wait. I'll hold my questions. But when they first started studying it, they thought it was just the standing stones. Yeah. And then they started using new techniques, and they realized that there was structures that were built outside of the standing stones. And then I asked they because you mentioned mounds. Right, exactly. And then they started noticing that there's there's earth mounds that are associated with it. And now that they've got LIDAR, which is um, light refracting something, something. Anyway, it's <laughs> um, lasers. Technical. It's lasers. They fly lasers over it, and they use the lasers to get these really, really, really high-res images. And that allows us to strip away the different layers of the foliage and the trees and the grass so we can just look at what the contours of the earth look Pure like. Pure topographical. There. Right. And it allows us to see that these mound works in the landscape that we've been associating with Stonehenge is actually far larger than we originally thought. So they're still not like 100% sure, which again, they'll never be, of Ever. what Stonehenge was used for, but we have some really good working theories. And by we, I mean the people that do that particular right. type of archaeology. That, that, got it. Um, got it. So yeah, I mean, Stonehenge is a great example of that, though, because... Each time the field gets new technology, they take it out there, they run the machines over the, the area, and we learn more about it than we knew. There aren't a lot of digging, there isn't a lot of digging that goes on out at Stonehenge anymore just because we want to preserve the site, mm -hmm. and archaeology is inherently destructive because yeah. once you take it out of the ground, you can't put, you it, can't back. put it back. That was my question. Why don't they just take backhoes and just dig the whole place up? Well, I mean, if we were here in America, we would. We would, um, wouldn't we? And Europe, Europe, from what I hear, takes That's off like terrible. the first 300 years of the backhoe because like 300 years, whatever. We have actual history here. We've um, had pubs that have been around longer than that, really? Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, like, like, I love the fact that, that that's true, but at the same time, you feel like you're like, oh, you don't have to be mean about it. Right. Um, but yeah, so we want to preserve sites, Talking especially to really ahead. important sites like uh, Stonehenge. So that's why we don't just take backhoes to it. Oh, okay. That was my question earlier, because yeah. I was like, why haven't they just gone... Well, and, and we've got all these different ways, these all these uh, uninvasive ways of getting into the ground now. Um, we've got magnetometers, which take magnetic readings of the ground, of the a surface. A what atometer? A magnetometer. It takes magnetic readings of the dirt itself, so we can actually get an idea of what's under the ground before we even start digging. Oh, it's like sonar for dirt. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but and we do actually have. Like, don't laugh at me, Scott. This isn't. No, I don't know anything. About, I know nothing. Dude, uh, the about first time I was introduced to a magnetometer, or I, I said it, a magnetometer. I said it wrong. Uh, that's exactly what I said. I was like, "Oh, it's like sonar for dirt." It, I was laughing because you're on the right page. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not sonar. It's using magnetics. Right. Yeah. It's not yeah, sound. Yeah, exactly. It's but not we, sound. Yeah. We do electrocute the dirt sometimes, so we, we do do that to find things. What does electrocuting the dirt do? Well, you run a current through the the, the dirt. Well, it wouldn't go anywhere. It's dirt. Well, it does though. And 
the, ah. the current the current goes between two points, and as it goes between, because we've got they kind of look like cleats, and they roll through the ground. And um, oh, okay. You can create a picture of what the soil looks like underneath the the surface using seeing where the the, the current bounces back. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that yeah. makes yes. perfect okay. sense. Like sometimes I can't. I'm, no, that I is awesome. But yeah, no, so we've got all kinds sense. of different ways of looking at the dirt under the dirt without ever actually digging into it. And they've used a lot of that on sensitive cool. sites like Stonehenge. Yeah, um, we've got a few of them here in the states too. But because I know n- oh, like nothing, what? I know well, I know point, everything oh, about right, right, altiology, okay. but I know nothing about <laughs> real archaeology. Well, and that's the thing, like like cargo cults archaeology like i like to call our cargo cult science where they're just mimicking the steps of science without understanding what they're doing like they don't understand all of the work that goes into it but they know that there's a conference and they know they know there's a paper and they know their artifacts and so they they do pieces of it um that's the problem like they think it sounds so much cooler when you come up with these mysterious objects that are out of context and they're out of place and you you have no way of knowing where they came from or what they're supposed to represent but now they're just making they're just speculating these huge crazy ideas um but we had tomatoes they wore them like jewelry right exactly that kind of stuff like but archaeology goes okay there's tomatoes and they're sliced why were they sliced? Why, why, were, the, why were the tomatoes sliced? And then yeah. they're like, where did the tomatoes come from? Because tomatoes don't just fall out of the sky. So who had the tomatoes and how and they, did they, they get were the tomatoes? Arranged, no, I and have so it, this is a thing right. that was on I purpose. I have it on good authority that you can build pyramids with tuning forks and levitate them through the air. I'm I pretty mean, certain that's fact. I guess if you got like a big enough tuning fork, you could use it as a lever and kind of wedge. And pry it in there? Pry yeah. it out? Oh, no. wait. So levitating rocks for pyramids is more altiology? I mean, my personal favorite story is that they were poured, is that the bricks were not, is oh. that the bricks were they actually weren't melted. quarried in. They were not they were, quarried. Oh. They were actually molded in place. Uh, that's my favorite one so far. But yeah, that's it's that kind of stuff. But it, that's th- a pretty cool theory. I'd never heard it before, just until right now. I have all kinds of crazy stuff. But the problem with those theories is, is we know how the pyramids were built. Like we have documented evidence of how the pyramids were built, written in the hands of the people who built the pyramids. Yeah, what but nobody wants to read the manual. Well, nobody the reads thing, the like, manual, that, right? That part isn't a mystery, but yet it's the part that everybody sticks to because, like. The average person is just like, whoa, look at this huge, giant thing. How did it get here? And it's like, well, here, here's yeah. a document that says how. No, 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 it must have been no, aliens. No, no, seriously, so how cooler. did it get here? This right here. Yeah. No, 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 the, right. the existential how. Like, seriously, well, read the book. Then, yeah, I mean, it's a deep <laughs> question, man. Didn't, deep, didn't, deep didn't question. slaves right. build the pyramids? No, actually. Oh. No, they do not. I mean, this is, you're going. Rico has fallen for the trap. Get him. It's okay. No, that, no, one, that one's I'm actually just really common. Um, right. The, the belief that the slaves were used. Slave well, that's where the meme comes from, where you see the pyramids, and it says anything is uh, accomplishable if you have an unexhausting you know, supply of slave labor. Yeah. Well, and see, there's an unexhaustible supply of slave labor is part of the problem there. Um, Ta-da. This network is supported by our listeners. You can become a supporting member by going to arcpodnet.com slash members and signing up. As a supporting member, you have access to high-quality downloads of each show and a discount at our future online store and access to show hosts on a members-only Slack team. For professional members, we'll have training shows and other special content offered throughout the year. Once again, go to arcpodnet.com slash members to support the network and get some great extras and swag in the process. That's arcpodnet.com slash members. Members. Save on O'Reilly Brake Parts Cleaner. Get two cans of O'Reilly Brake Parts Cleaner for just $8. Valid in store only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. If you're a facilities manager at a warehouse and your HVAC system goes down, it can turn up the heat, literally. But don't sweat it, Granger has you covered. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products for all your operations, including warehouse HVAC maintenance. And even better, they offer access to experts and fast delivery, so you and your warehouse can both keep your cool. Call 1 800 Granger, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Wait, then, but, so how were the pyramids really built? Because I don't know. They were built by the people who lived in the area. They, they they were built by craftsmen who were trained in the area. They were built by the... Oh, Masons the, did it. The local farmers and that kind of... Yeah, again, once again, it is the Masons' fault. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they go, they and, go and by the way, you hooked the jealousy up, so I had to get mine out. Oh, uh, right, so, did you get jealous? Yeah, yeah. So. I was just like... Oh, oh you're twitchies. She said, I just saw that. Yeah. Because so, so, she complicated, complimented Rico's lanyard that is I, Masonic I do always like nature. seeing the Masonic stuff because like that's my favorite like theory. My, my favorite... The, <laughs> Crazy theories are, are all the Masonic ones. Like, you guys killed Lincoln. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, we're not allowed to admit, I mean, allegedly killed Lincoln. Right. No, I mean, we, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying that I know that you killed Lincoln. Oh, well, it's okay <laughs> if you know. You were your... Masonically adjacent. That's fine. Right, right. We're, we're good. <laughs> it's all right. Um, yeah, that's... But yeah, back, back to the pyramids. They actually just used the, the labor of the people that worked in the area. Like, when the, after the f- crops had gone in, you had a, a labor force because, you know, once the plants are there, you got to watch them grow. Right. And Makes so sense. while things were growing, they built the pyramids. Because that takes time. Yeah. Since you got nothing else no, to do. I seriously like the theory that they were poured and not quarried in. That one is one of my favorites because that one actually requires, um, like, super technology. Right. And there's a couple different theories as to where the super technology came from. It's either Atlantis or aliens. Yes. That's where I was going. Yeah. I love Atlantis theories. Because Atlantis they did that for the Hoover crazy. Dam, right? Oh, did the Atlanteans build the, the Hoover Dam? No, I was saying the poured in, like the Hoover Dam, I right? don't actually know how the Hoover Dam was built. I just know that yeah. it's a modern I, I think they poured in concrete. They did. Yeah, I mean, they, I, I assume they probably did pour it in place. Yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. like how they lay a sidewalk. I mean, they, they don't bring in slabs of sidewalk. They pour them in place. They pour them in. Yeah. So that's and we got that technology from the aliens, so why, well, not, yeah. why not the pyramids? Well, it's, it's the Atlanteans, but yeah. I mean, oh, well, the, the Atlanteans people. are aliens. You know that, Aliens, right? Atlanteans, Ooh, Nerubians, maybe. potato, My apricot. My other favorite thoughts, they're actually part of the Cthulhu mythos, which is totally real, by the way, guys. Hashtag deep ones? Yeah, oh, yeah. <sighs> that's so Hashtag good. Ones, like the, what's, what's, what's the one that lives in the, the lake? Or the, it lives in the water? Shh. Wait, we which one? Talk about like the that. main one? Yeah. That lives under the ocean? You, Cthulhu himself? Oh, is that, is that... I thought there was another name. Right. But obviously, I'm um, losing my so, points here. So we are, we are beyond the realm of YOLO, okay? <laughs> and we are now into Yasko. You only summon Cthulhu once. Let's not say these names too many times. Yasko. Let's just... And now we're going back to... Uh, you only summon Cthulhu once. Gotcha. Okay. Yasko. Yasko. And we don't want to have anything... If anybody like wants that. to follow a really entertaining... Twitter feed, look for Tiny Archeo, and it's a bot run uh, Twitter account, but it's generating like this m- weird plot of a dig that's happening somewhere. You never really know where, and random people on the dig are constantly summoning some form, some nice. Cthulhu monster, because of oh. course that's what we do. We, we wake up mummies and we summon Cthulhu. That's what archaeologists do. Right. I mean, we learned that in our undergrad. Oh, okay. So. That's not even master's degree. That's no, no, that's, that's undergrad stuff. Basic course. Okay. I mean, good. if you can't summon a basic old one, I mean, you just you're never going to make there it into your master's work. Right. It'll it'll crush you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right. <laughs> your mind literally. will go. You, you'll yeah, never literally, make it space. Literally. <laughs> Phenomenal. So uh, I have known uh, Sarah for a while now, and she has made one of my favorite garments. Oh my god. Okay. So I'm going to tell this. To, can I tell the story? This no, is it's a good fine. Yeah? I just think it's funny you tell everybody this. Um, uh, because this story. I mean, okay. So you're like, oh wow, I never knew all that. Uh, and here's Scott all and I like, played you. vampire back when it was cool. Yeah. It's still cool. Don't let anybody tell you that. It's still cool. I haven't played it in so long. I have no idea. <laughs> right. It's it's not. I mean, you can he lie to me. It's yet. cool. It's it was, no, I'm it's kidding. Cool, it's, Rico. It's it is still cool. cool. I don't care. It is cool. That's right. I'm the guy with the unpopular opinions on this on this podcast. Yeah. I if I say it's cool, it may not be popular but it's cool to me <laughs> i like that he owns it though he's like i am the unpopular nerd yeah yeah is it and he has had some zingers this weekend holy cow um so you were employed as a do you remember the, the origins of the story because so she looks over at me and she goes hmm. i was in college so looks looks up looks down looks up i was prince goes of the away. city you when were it was phenomenal was prince, yeah. and she comes back like how long did it take you to make this I mean, like, from start to finish, or how long did it take me from the point that I decided I was going to make it till I gave it to you? Sure. I, it only took me, like, two hours to make. Little column right. A, little column B. Two all hours yeah. to make. Okay, and she's like, well, I just whip this off in two hours. And this garment is what I played, used for my Samedi robe, okay, and it fits phenomenally. He had this character, and he was wearing this robe, and I don't know what it was, but it was awful. And it was bad. It was some bad Halloween costume that you just wouldn't let die. It was bad. And I was like, okay, you're going to be the right hand of the prince. You need to look nice. So I was like, alright, I'm just going to make Scott a robe, and then like present it to him, and embarrass him in front of everyone. And it didn't quite work out that way, but... Right? So I still have the robe to this. That was how many decades ago? Um, close enough. Shh. Oh, sorry. Um, and she goes, half, half of a decade she ga- ago. Half a decade thank you, ago. Thank you. So I she like gives that. it to me, and I throw this on, and it's immaculate. I give it to him, and he, like, no, this is the part that worked out really great. I give it to him, and I'm like, it's all in character, too, because I was all about giving gifts in character, which completely threw everyone off. Yes. But I'm like, here, you're mon papillon. You are my, my right hand, and I, you need to be presentable. And so I give him this robe, and it's this horrible tacky purple crush develop and I'm just like oh that's perfect for Scott so I give him this robe and he takes it and he's just like thanks 
And I'm like, okay, we'll go change. Go put it on now. And he's like, uh, seriously, I'm go- I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> and then he like goes and does something else. It takes him all night to get changed into it. And he yeah. finally comes out like, cause you didn't think it would fit. No, I didn't. <laughs> he didn't think it would fit. And it was, and it's this beautifully French seamed. I did um, French seam it yesterday. Uh, it's this fantastic, like Holocaust cloak. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. And I said, how did you get this to fit right? And she replies, oh, well, I did some forensic archaeology. They, the police bring in these bones, and I you know, have not. to lay everybody out on the table. And I had to look at it. So I looked at you, and I just imagined you laying down like you were dead. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, well, there's the measurements. I'm good here. <laughs> and I was like, what? And that's that whole, yeah, put it in the right frame, piece it out, put it all together, and there's your picture. Archaeology. I, I'm proud of that robe. I didn't use a pattern for that one. Yeah. And uh, and again, no pattern. No, just I didn't, I didn't said, pattern well, for yeah, one. you know. Uh, I need a cool robe. Let's do that. Yeah, I'm right. Gonna have to find, I'm going to have to find my own archaeologist right. to make me a yeah, cool I robe. Don't, I don't sew for people anymore. Yeah. Really. Yeah. But I do have a cool machine that I use for myself. Because I was going to say, do you take commission pieces? No, I no, don't. No, you don't. You've do moved not. past that. No, no she's, a, she's a scientist. She yeah. doesn't have time to sew. She's internet famous. She's a scientist. Internet she's famous. I'm so not internet famous. She's, uh, it's all over. And there it is. But no, I like to throw that back because to this, I wear it every Halloween. I know. I've seen pictures of you and it still. I wear it every, every time Halloween. You wear it. Like, I and I'm like, yeah, that's it. And I was like, shout out to Sarah. There it is. It's a good robe. It is the phenomenal, and it has held, it has stood the test of time, fashion wise and construction wise. No, I made you the black one. You were wearing yes. the purple, uh, the ugly yeah, purple the, one. That's I right. I was hoping you wouldn't remember that that's part because I was like, right. the crushed purple velvet the was all me. Oh wait, the, the picture, every picture you're in in Halloween with the it's black the, robe. It's the it's black yeah, that robe. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I've seen that robe. That's w- a nice ass robe. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> And That's it's right. it's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah I was, I was like, great. maybe she won't correct that. You were no, like the skull didn't. pimp, and I was just like, I, no, I can't have that. I was. I was a skull pimp. Like, half the city already wanted to kill you anyway. Just I needed for that to, outfit. I needed to clean up your outfit. I needed to yeah. clean up your She image. cleaned up my act. It was wonderful. And then they still tried to kill you anyway, but, you know, whatever, vampire. Yeah, whatever. Well, again, as I said on the last podcast, I suffer from the 10-point flaw played by Scott Troiano, so right, yeah. it's a thing. That is pretty funny. So, um, do we call you doctor? No. Do we call Should you? Should we call you doctor? Should no. we like doctor? Do you like doctor. us to call I mean, you doctor? I mean, you can call me doctor. I can See, play I was gonna doctor, but I don't actually have my PhD. So oh, okay. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you there for half a second. We'll come back to the doctor. Then. So when I do like get a backhoe out at Stonehenge and get Pan, the Pandorica out. Right. So after Seriously? the cops Shouldn't arrest you and What's a Pandorka? throw you in jail. Ugh, don't talk to me. Oh, my God. Did you really? <laughs> I don't know what a Pandorka is. And then she said, oh, my God, did you really? That's now a sound bite. <laughs> That's <laughs> happening. <laughs> um, sorry. The Pandorka from Doctor Who? Because that doctor was what took me there. He's he's not a Whovian. Oh, man. That hurts. That's like Amy was in the Pandorka for like oh, thousand, 2,000 years. 2,000 years. Rory waited Rory outside waited the, whole for her the whole time. the whole time. You said Pandora. And then for some stupid I reason, they broke up over Pandorka. not being able to have kids. No, and they the didn't break up. They went back in time together when the when the yeah, weeping yeah, yeah, angels when the touched season, them. When the season started, like that, that was the end of yeah, that there season. Was the it was like, up, I waited was like, for <gasps> you for two thousand years, and then like they start the next season. And it's like, oh, they broke up because Amy can't have kids. Because that's going to happen. Sorry, you said yeah. Pandorica. I heard Pandorka. P A N D O R K A. I'm going to be mean to you. Oh, rainbows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah rainbows. that's that's fine. <laughs> If Scott had pronounced it correctly, it would have been an issue. Yes, it was purely on me. Friends with the, like, Rico, because, why are you because friends we with Because we work, Scott? we work really, really well together. <laughs> and there it is. It's a, he brings a certain je ne sais quoi. You bribe him, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Well, I've been known to. Him. <laughs> I mean, it's true. When I have friends, it's true. That's all I'm saying. So, gaming with Scott is now a sad affair. No, I'm just kidding. No, I mean, it's not really. There's, there's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's going to be beer and dinner go. later. I'm going to be dinner. just fan. I'm yeah, going to be food, fantastic. Yeah. Get us all, everybody there. It is fantastic. All right, so where can we find you? Where, where's all of the websites, yeah, all of the deets? Um, okay. all this, oh, Rico's got this one. You mentioned you're on a network, yes. just a full-on network. What is the name of the network? The Archaeological Podcasting Network. Archaeological. The APN. All right, Archaeological Podcasting Network. All right, yes. and what is the name of your podcast? My podcast is called Archaeological Fantasies, and there is a blog component, so if you Google it, you'll probably get the podcast first. Um, because it does, it is more popular. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can also or, or what's type the in, shortened name again? You can also tar- type in Archie Fantasies, which is Archie Fantasies. Yeah. So it's Archie Fantasies. Ar- if you no, want it's Archie. It. it is. Um, but that'll also pull up the Twitter account. Oh, all right. So what's the Twitter account? What's the Twitter handle? Archie Fantasies. Archie Fantasies. Archie Fantasies. Archie Fantasies. One word. 
Well, hyphenated? it's all one word. Yeah. One word? No underscores, no, no parentheses. Hyphens. All one word. And no, there's also no, an Instagram. No. I mean, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook, but I don't check it, so I don't send anything there. All right. Uh, how, really quick question. How would you um, type up Gen Con if you were looking for it in a search engine? Yeah, we're not trying to be an asshole here, but I'm going to. Yeah, I that's feel, a good question. I feel like this may be slightly passive aggressive. <laughs> Just, just no, asking. it's full I'm on just aggressive. Getting that vibe. There ain't um, nothing passive about it. I don't right. know when I when I hashtag it on everything that I'm doing. It's it's one word. One word. Thank one you. Word. One, one word. word. Huh. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, she is an archaeologist. She knows that Gen Con is one word. If you had to deconstruct this, you're still looking at one word. Thanks. I'm still looking for one word. Yeah. And that's. I mean, the I know there are some archaeological people who do put the the space between it, but it's like Those you know when you wrong. have the misspelled word and there's only like a hundred hits on it because everybody knows that's the wrong spelling of it. That's what you get. See, that's what happens when you put tomato on top. You misspell Gen Con instead of tomato on bottom. You, you when could it's hypothetically put the cheese on the bottom, and that would create your water. She's right. Too. She's right. She's but absolutely then the cheese right. and the tomato slide. No, not if you tap. You gotta. You gotta pat your tomatoes. See, that's why I love you. <laughs> I'm sorry, because some of us salt the tomatoes, rinse them, and then pat them. I wouldn't salt them first, but no, I would definitely No, you get a deeper flavor. Them. I'm not kidding you. Okay, so try this next one. You slice them up. And then salt pat them. Pat them. No, no. Slice them up. Pat, pat them. them. Then salt them. Then kosher salt. And I'm talking a big ass pinch. I mean, you're, like a you're handful. You're basically doing like a salt pickle. And with then, a tomato. Yes. And it, so it pulls all the water out. Right. Okay, you put them over like a cake uh, uh, drying right, rack. Right, right. Right? You let them 15 minutes. Then literally rinse them off with water, and you're like, "Well, why are you putting the water on them after the?" You because the they off. they won't absorb it again. Pat them again, and you will get such a deep tomato flavor. It's amazing. This is how this is how you deconstruct a tomato. There it is. It is, yeah. And that's and you're he's saying you will never go. You will oh, never I know go he's back. A um, you will never go back Scott, to like if you have the time. Scott's love affair with food is like foodiologist, yeah. not just yeah. a foodie. He's yeah, a foodiologist. I, I mean, you could be a food archaeologist. Those things exist. Really? Oh yeah. We are, we're all out there. What the hell there. am I doing here? I mean, you can do archaeology of anything. If it's something people have touched, you can you can do the archaeology of it. <sighs> touched Rico for 10 and me for 5. Um, no, we don't want those archaeologists. That was I a mean, terrible joke, wasn't I guess it? that would be the bioarchaeologist. Whoa, like, well, all right. Like, I was making a joke, and you're going down that road. And into I'm like, science, and yeah. I'm like, wave off. Wave off, because I know where this is headed, and that's we, not a good thing. We can do this. Try the tomato. <laughs> no, no. See, and that's why she and I, for years, because she's like, no, I will continue to steal, steer directly to it. And I'm like, no. Look away from the light, but it's so shiny. Because I will, I will put down the challenge, and she'll go challenge accepted. And I'm like, ooh. No, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, my, my greatest achievement was the night that I actually caught Scott off guard. That was that was a crowning achievement of my role playing life. Ooh, look at the time! I think we need to run. So it was it was phenomenal. High fives. It was all it was a night to remember, <laughs> and I don't like being caught off guard. And it was, it was um, there was uh, yeah. You deserved it too. I you did. were being a dirty, dirty butthole. This <laughs> seems like it seems like a I lot was. of the guests we've had today have LARPed with you. And <laughs> hey, this that's is, a thing. This it has is game come up. Gonna... This has come up. Uh, this is not the first time you deserved it has been uttered yeah. today. This is not the first time at all. Gee, yeah, it's I like did. a pattern's emerging. <gasps> yeah, I know, right? Oh my goodness, good times. Didn't you all know that this was just my giant couch where I lay down and tell me about your mother, tell me about your father? This is all therapy. I can't for tell me. you about my mother. She's sitting right there. Yeah, I know. We love her. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're here with Sarah Head and yes. professional ar- archaeologist. Professional archaeologist. I am. I will be an RPA. Yeah. That means something to other people, so don't worry. No. Did you get that one? RPA. I'm going to look it up. I'll Google it. Right Registered on. professional archaeologist. Oh, there we go. Nice. Well, that makes sense. I don't have so, to look it up. So anymore. was Indian RPA? Indy was not an RPA. A, because the RPA did not exist back then, and B, because he is no way. Because he's not an archaeologist. <laughs> also, he's not an archaeologist. <gasps> She said it earlier. I mean, she. Now Harrison she, Ford. Harrison know, Ford kidding. has sat on the the triple uh, the American Archaeology Association board of directors. Nice. So he's like an honorary amateur archaeologist. Nice. Right on. No, I'm not knocking it. It's Professional Nazi there. puncher, though. Yes, definitely. Uh, again, I will go on. But since that got brought up, hashtag always punch a Nazi. I, I do not advocate violence against anyone for their chosen. Misguided belief systems. Okay, but so what if we were always to, punch a Nazi? What if we were to bury them in sediment and leave them there for th- like a cat box, maybe five or ten years, and then gave you a hot tip to an archaeological dig? I mean, it's going to depend on like how acidic the soil is and how much water is going through the soil at that time. Is it submerged sediment or is it dry sediment? 
Yeah. Yes. All right. See, we can totally uh, have make a question this. in the back. Yes. Yes, you in would, the back. It, as you unearthed them right. through the layers, would you then punch a Nazi? Because technically, they don't have. Uh, I mean, he's been there for ten years decomposing. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's. I don't really want to put my fist through that. Yeah, yeah. That's, she's a lot right. Of, All right. that's a lot of gross. All right. I was, All never right, mind. Okay. Yeah. No, we were gonna go. Next level is no. Okay. All yeah. right. Well. Well, we gone deep I thought, I thought you guys radical. said there was like a sensor level here. Like there is. Uh, we, I, that's why we stopped. Right. That's why we stopped. That's why we, we stopped. I saw where. Oh, there's that cliff. Let's stop. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll do the hole Look where at we. You, we'll, you've learned restraint. It's so cute. <sighs> well, it has. That's probably going to be a soundbite too. <laughs> yep. Great. <laughs> hey, you're the editor. You'll you'll. It's, no, it's going to be in there if you out. want it to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, we're here with Sarah Head, archaeologist, archaeologist. <laughs> Uh, Debunker of, um, of non archaeologists. Altiology. 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 I'm giving that one heard, a job. He's going to love it. Heard that one here on Gaming Scott. We love that phenomenally. Um, archaeological fantasies mm-hmm. go out, uh, find them, put them in your ear, and love them like we love them. Thank you. I appreciate Yay. that. Um, once again, uh, we are here at Gen Con 50. Ooh. Gen Con 50! Can you believe 50 years? Right. I mean, seriously. Right. I've been coming like, for about 12, so yeah. yeah. Oh. I remember I, going to Gen Con when it was in Geneva. In Geneva. Yep. I, I wanted so. to, but I, oh, I couldn't I swing that. Little, have like, you been over to nice. the Lucas Oil Stadium? Know, they have a cool? recreation on the field of I was so excited they have one. a gaming museum in there, or yep. a game museum in there. I was super, yep. super excited. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, well, then you've already been there. You've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. Okay. And I tried to walk through the doors because someone put up a door arch with doors that don't work because... Well, it doesn't make any sense. My only complaint about the whole exhibit, I'm just like, why don't the doors open? <laughs> Ta-da. I was like yanking on that bastard, too, and the <laughs> security guard was like, ma'am, the door doesn't yeah, open. Ma'am. I'm like, yes, it ma'am. does. Ma'am, the, the, but it's a door, and there's an arch, but and I'm a like, thing. Why doesn't why it open? Why don't you have a sign, then? Please don't open the doors, or please use other door. And then you're like, okay, I see this door. Where is the other door? The one out. <laughs> Nothing happened. It's fine. Okay, Carry good. on. All right, so we're here with Sarah Head, Archaeological Fantasy. We're going to get out of here, uh, Capital in Maryland. Um, I'm saying it quick Woo! before he hits the mic again. Woo! Um, and as always with Gaming with Scott, you'll hear from us real soon. Bye! Bye! Bye. Thanks for listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. Our music was provided by Archaeosuit Productions. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes or Stitcher and share us wherever you use social media. You can contact us with your questions, comments, or angry email at archiefantasies at gmail.com. You can follow the podcast at www.archaeologypodcastnetwork.com slash archiefantasies. You can follow the blog at www.archiefantasies.com and get updates on Tumblr and Twitter at Archiefantasies. You can also look for us on Facebook. If you're looking for the show notes for this episode, go to the podcast website at www.archaeologypodcastnetwork.com slash Archiefantasies. Thanks again for listening. dinosaurs! This show is produced by Chris Webster and Tristan Boyle and was edited by Chris Webster. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. See? Are you happy? Do you get it now? Do you get it? America, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By honoring your sacred vocation of business, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. At Grand Canyon University, our MBA degree program is 100% online, with emphases in business analytics and finance to help you reach your goals. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu.